One million acres of America's most valuable farmland are steadily and permanently sinking at rates measured in inches and even feet each year. Scientists using satellite data have confirmed that entire regions are collapsing underground, not from flooding or from earthquakes, but from a hidden force locked beneath the soil. This irreversible collapse, driven by decades of groundwater loss, is reshaping the landscape faster than anyone expected. How did the nation's breadbasket reach a tipping point no amount of water can reverse? And what does it mean for everyone who relies on the food grown here? In a small patch of California's Central Valley, a set of colored bands on a digital map tells a story most people will never see with their own eyes. This is INSAR, Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar, a satellite technology that measures ground movement from orbit with precision down to centimeters. NASA and Jet Propulsion Laboratory scientists track millions of data points every month using satellites like Sentinel-1 to scan the same fields over and over. The result is a time lapse of the land itself moving pixel by pixel across an area the size of a city block. In one hotspot near Corcoran, the data reveals an astonishing drop up to 2.4 feet in a single year. Each colored contour on the map marks a new boundary of subsidence, showing not just where the ground is sinking, but exactly how quickly it is happening. The satellite radar works by firing pulses toward Earth and capturing the echoes as they bounce back. By comparing the phase differences between two passes, scientists can detect ground movement invisible to the naked eye. Every pixel on these images represents about 30 meters, roughly the size of a baseball diamond, allowing researchers to pinpoint which fields are dropping fastest. Over the past decade, these maps have grown darker and more contoured as the sinking accelerates and spreads across the valley floor. Researchers at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory and Stanford University rely on this technology to confirm what ground-based sensors only hint at. The precision of INSAR means that even subtle changes, as small as a few centimeters a month, become visible patterns. When these patterns are overlaid with farm boundaries, canals, and towns, the scale of the problem becomes irrefutable. The satellite evidence is clear. This collapse is not a rumor or a projection. It is a measured, ongoing transformation of some of the country's most productive farmland. The data does not just show where the land is sinking. It reveals the speed, the spread, and the relentless advance of a crisis moving beneath the surface. On the edge of a cotton field near Corcoran, California, a small metal tower rises above the crops. Bolted to its base is a USGS, continuous GSS station, called Station CVS-1, tracking the ground's every subtle move. These stations, scattered across the Central Valley, use satellite navigation signals to measure vertical displacement with accuracy under one centimeter. Every quarter, CVS-1 logs its position against a fixed reference, recording the valley floor's slow descent. Over the past six years, the station's data shows a steady pattern. Each quarter, the ground drops by 2.5 to 4 centimeters, echoing the rates seen in NSAR images from orbit. The most recent quarter, ending in June, recorded a loss of 2.8 centimeters, nearly identical to the satellite trend above it. Beneath the surface, a borehole extensometer runs hundreds of feet down, anchored in the deep clay layers responsible for the valley's stability. This instrument measures the compaction of the aquitard itself, picking up changes that satellites and GNSS can only infer. Since 2019, the extensometer at CVS-1 has recorded a total compaction of nearly 1.4 meters with no sign of rebound. Quarterly logs show 25 to 28 millimeters of irreversible compression, matching the GNSS record almost exactly. USGS hydrogeologists review these numbers alongside the satellite maps, looking for discrepancies. Instead, they find confirmation. The NSAR color contours, the GNSS vertical tracks, and the extensometer readings all point to the same reality. 
the ground is sinking at a rate that cannot be explained by surface erosion or tectonic shifts. Each instrument, independent and precise, tells the same story from a different angle. This multi-layer monitoring forms the backbone of the Central Valley's subsidence program. It is not just the satellites that see the collapse, it is the ground itself, measured month after month, year after year. The consensus among the scientists is clear. The collapse is real, accelerating, and measured by every tool at their disposal. Deep beneath the fields of the Central Valley, a slow and permanent transformation is underway. This is not erosion or a sudden quake. It is the silent compaction of ancient clay layers called aquitards. These layers, layers, formed over thousands of years, hold water in tiny spaces between clay particles. When groundwater is pumped out to irrigate crops, the pressure that once propped up these grains disappears. Without that support, the grains collapse together, closing off the pores forever. Dr. Michelle Sneed, a leading USGS hydrogeologist, describes it with a simple analogy. Imagine squeezing a wet sponge. At first the sponge bounces back when you let go, but if you squeeze it hard enough for long enough, it never returns to its original shape. The same irreversible process happens underground. This compaction is not just theoretical. Borehole extensometers, precision instruments that measure changes in the depth of the earth, have tracked the collapse in real time. In the Corcoran area, the extensometer anchored in deep clay layers has logged a total compaction of nearly 1.4 meters since 2019. Each quarter, the device records another 25 to 28 millimeters of permanent loss. Even after wet winters, when water returns to the surface, the compressed clays do not rebound. The evidence is clear in the logs. Once those spaces are crushed, they do not reopen. Elastic deformation, temporary swelling and shrinking can happen in sand and gravel, but fine-grained clays behave differently. Their structure changes at a micro level, locking in the damage. This is why satellite and ground-based measurements show no seasonal recovery. The land simply continues to sink year after year, regardless of rainfall. Scientists reviewing the data see a one-way process. The more water is withdrawn, the more the ground compacts, and the more permanent the loss becomes. There is no natural reset. The clay's ability to store water and support the land above is gone for good. This micro-scale physics underpins the broader collapse now visible across the valley. It explains why even if all groundwater pumping stopped today, the land would continue to settle for decades. The irreversible compaction of aquitards is not just a scientific detail. It is the foundation of a crisis that cannot be undone by simply turning off the pumps. Across the Central Valley, the story of sinking land is written in decades of numbers, drawn not just from a single drought or season, but from a hundred years of relentless extraction. Large-scale irrigation began in the 1920s, transforming dry plains into one of the world's most productive farm belts. But as surface water ran short, farmers turned to the vast aquifers below and tapped wells that reached ever deeper into the earth. By the 1960s, the pace of groundwater pumping had reached new highs. In just a few decades, the valley lost more than 30 feet of elevation in some areas. The United States Geological Survey now estimates that, since the 1920s, the Central Valley has sunk more than 60 feet in its worst hit zones, a drop that would swallow a five-story building. The pattern is clear in the records. Each major drought, 1977, 2014, and 2022, brought a spike in groundwater use as rivers and reservoirs dried up and wells became the last resort. During the drought from 2012 to 2016, satellite data and ground sensors tracked up to 10 feet of subsidence in certain districts. The most recent drought years from 2020 to 2025 have accelerated the collapse even further, with some fields dropping nearly two and a half feet in a single year. These are not isolated incidents. The cumulative effect is a valley-wide loss, reshaping the topography and changing the flow of water above and below ground. 
This century-long dependence on groundwater has locked in a new reality for the Central Valley. The clay aquitards that once stored water now stand permanently compressed. Even as new laws and management plans aim to slow the damage, the legacy of past pumping continues to drive the land downward. Models from Stanford and the United States Geological Survey show that even if all wells were shut off today, decades of additional sinking are already set in motion. The valley's history of extraction is now embedded in its future, with every foot of lost elevation a record of water pumped and never returned. Stanford's groundwater modeling team set out to answer a question that satellites and sensors alone could not. How long will the sinking continue, to continue to, and how deep could it go? Their approach begins with a digital reconstruction of the Central Valley's underground layers, built from decades of well logs, borehole samples, and water level records. Each layer, sand, gravel, silt, and especially the deep clays, gets mapped with its own thickness, porosity, and compaction behavior. Into this virtual landscape, researchers feed a century's worth of pressure data. Every major drought, every spike in groundwater pumping, every brief recovery after a wet year. The model tracks how water is drawn from storage, how poor pressure drops, and how the weight of the land above presses down on the emptied spaces below. What emerges is a timeline of irreversible change. In areas where deep clay aquitards have already lost most of their pore space, the model projects continued subsidence for another 20 to 50 years, even if all pumping stopped immediately. The rate and duration depend on the thickness of the clay and the history of stress. Fields that have sunk the most will keep sinking the longest. The simulation draws on INSAR and GNSS data to calibrate its predictions, matching observed drops of 2 to 4 centimeters per quarter in hotspots like Corcoran. Each scenario, whether pumping continues, slows, or halts, shows a lag between action at the surface and response underground. The forecast is not a guesswork curve, but a data-driven projection grounded in the physics of compaction. For farmers, water managers, and policymakers, these models offer a stark but reliable preview. The land's slow collapse is already written into its history, and the timeline for recovery is measured not in seasons, but in decades. Separate teams at the United States Geological Survey, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and Stanford University have spent years tracking a slow transformation beneath America's most productive farmland. Their methods differ, some rely on radar satellites, others on ground-based sensors or advanced computer models, but their conclusions now align. In California's Central Valley and other key regions, the collapse of deep clay aquitards is not just ongoing, it is largely irreversible. United States Geological Survey hydrologists describe the situation in plain terms. Decades of groundwater extraction have permanently compacted the valley's fine-grained clays. Once those layers are squeezed, they do not recover. NASA's INSAR satellite data confirms this from above, mapping fields and towns that have dropped by multiple feet in less than a decade. The agency's 2024 report states, Land subsidence in the San Joaquin Valley is driven by groundwater overdraft. The process is persistent, and the resulting ground loss is permanent in the affected zones. Stanford's modeling team, drawing on both satellite and borehole data, projects that even if all groundwater pumping stopped today, the land would continue to sink for another 20 to 50 years. The models show that the timeline for recovery is measured not in seasons, but in generations. A 2025 summary from the Doer School of Sustainability puts it plainly. Compaction of deep aquitards is effectively irreversible. Lost aquifer storage and ground elevation will not return. Taken together, these independent lines of evidence leave little room for doubt. Across the Central Valley and other vital farm regions, the ground is sinking, the damage is permanent, and the consequences will be felt for decades to come. On the outskirts of Corcoran, the Harada family's almond farm stands at the intersection of science and survival. 
For three generations, their orchards have produced nuts that end up in breakfast bowls and snack aisles across the country. The Central Valley, where their land sits, grows one quarter of America's food by value, an outsized share from a narrow band of soil and water. But now, the ground beneath their feet is slipping away faster than any spreadsheet or crop report can capture. The Haradas keep a folder of invoices in their kitchen, each one a record of the deepening crisis. In 2015, they drilled a new well to reach water at 400 feet. By 2022, that well ran dry. The next one had to go down to 600 feet at a cost of $450,000, more than the farm's entire annual profit. The receipts list steel casing, diesel for the rigs, and the work crews who labor day and night racing against the drop in groundwater. Every time the land sinks, the water table drops further, and the cost to reach it climbs. The consequences ripple beyond one family. As the ground compacts, the Harada's yields have fallen down 35% in less than a decade. Orchards that once produced 2.5 tons per acre now struggle to reach 1.6 tons per acre. In a region that supplies almonds, tomatoes, grapes, and dairy to millions, every lost acre means less food on the shelves nationwide. The valley's shrinking groundwater does not just threaten local livelihoods, it puts a critical share of America's food supply at risk. For the Haradas, the numbers are personal, but the stakes reach far beyond their fields. In 2017, a sudden breach along the Fryant Kern Canal sent shockwaves through California's water system. Over three days, the canal lining gave way as the ground beneath it dropped nearly three feet. Engineers from the California Department of Water Resources scrambled to contain the damage. The consequences rippled far beyond a single stretch of concrete. More than 200,000 acre feet of water, enough to supply half a million households for a year, were lost in the emergency shutdown. Downstream, 50,000 acres of farmland went dry, and growers faced a $100 million shortfall in crops that season. The Fryant Kern incident was not an isolated failure. It exposed a deeper vulnerability. The state's entire network of canals, aqueducts, and pipelines depends on ground that is no longer guaranteed to be stable. Infrastructure engineers have tracked the slow deformation of these systems for decades. As the land sinks, canals develop low spots, so-called bowls, where water pools and flow rates drop. The Department of Water Resources report from 2025 warns that, at current rates, the state water project could lose up to 87% of its delivery capacity by 2043 if subsidence continues unchecked. Repairs and reroutes can buy time, but the underlying ground keeps shifting. Every fix is a temporary patch on a moving foundation. With the stakes rising, water managers have turned to manage aquifer recharge, flooding fields and basins to push water back underground. In the Tulare Basin pilot projects, since 2019 have diverted millions of acre feet onto farmland during wet years. Monitors show some local success. At several sites, compaction rates slowed by as much as 20% after large recharge events. Yet the improvement is uneven and often short-lived. Deep clay layers, once compressed, remain locked in place. Stanford hydrogeophysicist Rosemary Knight says we can slow the sinking but we cannot undo what has already been done the ceiling for mitigation is clear recharge can buffer future losses it is but it cannot restore lost ground or fully protect the infrastructure above the reality is sobering engineers and scientists are working against a process that for much of the valley has already passed the point of no return and much of the damage is effectively irreversible Today, entire food producing regions are sinking faster than they can recover, a reality confirmed by satellite and ground data. As groundwater vanishes, the land's foundation is permanently altered. This is not a distant threat. It is a present crisis, shaping what ends up on our tables. The ground beneath our harvest is shifting, and our future depends on how we respond. Let us know your perspective in the comments.